Hey, everybody. It's Emily. I hope you're all having a great start to this new year. In this year, we'd really like to see our podcast grow even larger. So if you haven't already, please leave us a five-star review on whatever platform you're using to listen to the podcast. It really helps spread the show and get our name out there so that even more people can enjoy the content that we produce. With that, enjoy episode 74, Lyra in Wonderland. Do you like liquor and things that go boo? Then buckle up, listener, because this one's for you. Prepare yourself for the Hideous Laughter Podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Hideous Laughter Podcast, episode 74. Guys, gotta know what we're drinking. New year, new order. Emily. What you got? Not the Ooh. whole year. I don't want to be at the end. Uh-oh. I was at the end for a long time. So excited. I'm drinking the Paps Blue Ribbon hard coffee that was featured on shake Zone of bit. Truth. Yeah, you're going to want to shake that oh, okay. up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you guys have listened to the Zone of Truth, Griffin gave this a one out of five. Brooks gave this a two out of five. And I gave it a zero out of five. So, uh, let's see what Emily thinks. Uh, as far as coffee goes, it doesn't have a strong coffee flavor, but overall, I don't find it bad. I give it a 3.5. This is something I take to like a summer tailgate, drink it, and then probably get a little sweaty afterwards from the cafe. A summer tailgate? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what? Is this I can't. I it's filled with cream. What? Yes, but what? it's a cold beverage and it's it, coffee, so you want to drink it early in the day. Oh, it's going to be cold for about like two minutes, and then you're going to drink it at warmer than room temperature. No, I'd, I'd have a can of koozie on it. You're so wild. If, if I had to drink that at warm temperature, I would probably <laughs> just go walk off a parking garage or something. Okay, well, Emily, that's a very strange description of that, um, but I'm glad you adhered to the rating scale. Haley, what you drinking? I am drinking a cider uh, called The Dirty Mayor. You know, this mayor's been, I don't know, smoking crack on video <laughs> or <laughs> sending nudes or something. May- mayor Rob Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's my drink for tonight. But what does this dirty mayor taste like, Kaylee? Ginger? Oh, okay. It's uh it's actually ginger and apple, so it's it's really good. Okay. Why do you think they named it that? They said that the mayor keeps it clean, but the ginger makes it dirty. And I don't understand, but that's what they said. I'll well, speaking to somebody that makes it dirty. Brooks. <laughs> oh, thank you, Greg. Thank you, buddy. I am drinking on the Buster Knuckle. Well, he gave our uh, fan drink this week that I lost last week. Um, it is Larry's Lemonade with grenadine, lemon juice, tonic, and gin. That it's looks a little red there. Delicious. Is it just your cup? It's grenadine. got grenadine, grenadine in it. Grenadine, yeah. really. Mm. Is the implication there that uh, Larry's got some sort of uh, bad infection? Ugh. I mean, I, I didn't think so, but on the other hand, I'm really chasing it with uh, something very delicious, the new Glarus and El Shoe. All right. It's good. Speaking of somebody who's not good, Steve. Great. So Mr. now Jacob. I'm not only going yes. last, but I'm inheriting this bullshit. Yes. All right, fine. Um, that's what my life is now anyway. I'm drinking a Brownie Points. This is a brown ale with vanilla. This comes from Maplewood Brewing back in Chicago. I was just home for the holidays. I've had one of these before already. They are fantastic. So here we go. Oh, boy, is that good. It's really fucking smooth. It's great. Speaking of someone who's really fucking smooth, it's me. It's Griff. Mm. I'm, I'm drinking a pear <laughs> elderflower, Bon and Viv. Yeah, so... Steve, just remember that now you can pass off any sort of transition that you choose. 
<laughs> I could just try. take it or I could just leave it right there. <laughs> yeah, just remember, by the way, you're getting all butthurt about this, and I've literally been dealing with this for a year and, like, months. Like, a year and a half. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Get so, over it. Don't worry. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to take it as a new challenge for 2020 to find the dirty thing in however Emily's describing her drink. And pass that off to you. <laughs> that honestly won't be very hard because things Speaking are not very hard. <laughs> oh my god! Hi, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So I think we should uh, we should go ahead and roll off everybody but Brooks. Oh, I have an uh oh. What's your uh oh? A one. Oh, sick. Oh, oh. no. Maddie, 18. I'm good. Yeah, I got 12. Yeah, I had a three on the dice, so I was wow. thinking I was going to be at the bottom, but made it by the skin of my teeth. First one of the game. Before we get started, I want to do a little shout out to some pretty awesome members of the carrying crowd that got us some gifts and sent us some love for the holidays. So... Big one. I was drinking out of his cup on New Year's Eve. Jeremy, our buddy of um of Sheets fame. Of Sheets fame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this guy's the best. Um the most infectious laugh I've ever heard. Or maybe the most psychotic. I'm not really sure. Um, but he's a great dude and he sent us a whole bunch of stuff. We each got personalized mugs. Uh what a badass, and just we really appreciate it. He gave me a lot of credit. I mean, world's okay, SGM. Mm. Mm. Wow. So that's high praise. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, I think you got something, Steve. That's right. I got something very special, very personalized. So um, one of the best people in the world, um, uh, my, my boy, James, you know, him as Anaset Ravid on the Wheeler Woe podcast. He sent me just the coolest thing. So he's been to the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge theme park, which I've been dying to go to. Um, but he went ahead and sent me a nice little Christmas card, which was really just a friendship card that he uh, bastardized into a Christmas card. It was great. Um, and then he also sent me an actual game of Sabacc, which is the um, kind of like blackjack poker equivalent that exists in the star Wars universe. Uh, notably Han Solo plays it to win his ship, the millennium Falcon. And uh, now I have that game and I, I'm sure no one here would want to play that with me, but uh, we should play it. I mean, is it a good game? Is it a card game? Uh, Yeah. And actually James says that he's played it and he said he had a blast. It's like a mix up of blackjack and poker. I like like card games. Well then let's do it. Yeah. I don't want to play it if it's just like, Hey, this is only fun if you're a fan of Star Wars. No, it's, it actually but... see, like has very little to do with Star like, Wars. It's similar at all. to like Star Wars Lego, like the game. Uh-huh. Like that's just a fun game. Well, there you go. We should do it. It'll be fun. All right, sick. All right, good bet. Drinks and stuff. Yeah, and then our buddy Andy of Andy is Bad at Games on the Discord uh, sent us a nice heartfelt card. Thank you guys so much for for this stuff. It really makes us feel loved during the holiday season. Mm-hmm. The card was so sweet. Thank you. As well as um, on our Discord, we got a poem from um, Big Daddy Daycare. It was amazing. It's fr- it's a, a rendition of Twas the Night Before Christmas. It's like the full poem. Or like, like the whole Twas the Night Before Christmas, but about our characters. It's so good. So if you're not genius. on the Discord, you should hop on there because uh, it's on there. And I'm Santa. Eclipse is Santa. <laughs> Yeah, he really doesn't cut any corners, and there are some deep cuts from the show, like really good inside jokes from our show that he was clearly, he clearly put a lot of time and effort into this. It was really cool. Yes. And yeah, very well done, very smart, and very funny. If you get a chance, definitely go read it. I'll throw it up on our Patreon page as well, so if you can't dig through our Discord to find it, you'll be able to find it there. Sweet. But with all that out of the way, we find ourselves in a fungal room. And you guys found a very powerful magical item sitting across the way in this room. Lyra, who has the swim speed and the detect magic and the remove poison or, or no, you purify food and drink, purify water is um, 
has moved into the room with the rest of the party kind of waiting in the threshold of the door. She makes it 15 feet into the room, and a cloud of spores burst up. Everybody is within range of these spores, but only Lyra is affected. She thinks that she's shrunk to itty-bitty size, and she feels that if she just stays still, anything dangerous in this room will leave her alone. The rest of you see some of the fungus and vegetation start to move. And I need everybody to roll for initiative. <clears throat> Second natural one, and that's a different day. Nice. Not. So what's that go to, Eclipse? Is it dark? It's dim light, so yeah, yeah. Aaron will yeah, be yeah. out. So um, three. The tomb bay. Uh, not great for 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 my roll either, but a much better result. I got up to an eleven. Ickmer. 17. I lied four. Okay, that really matters. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, Lyra. 10. Oof. Not a uh, particularly quick on the draw team right now. Ickmer is first to act. Ickmer, in front of you, you see two. They look like stalks of fungus and writhing vines and they shoot up out of the water of distinct note they are purpley in color that's what you see well Lyra I'm not gonna let those purple fungus vines get you so I I'm coming in and I'm gonna if I have to I'll cut my way out I guess and Matumbe and Eclipse uh, I mean, if you see that I need to get out, just let me know, and I guess I will. And I'll try to bring Lyra with me. Okay. Where are you going? I am just going to move forward. Okay, it's difficult terrain, so... Yeah. And you will receive an attack of opportunity. The creature to the side in this circular room, it's been hiding just by the door waiting for something to enter this room. It has acted in a surprise round to release its spores, so it is not flat-footed, and thus can take its attack. It's going to take it. Okay, and what is it that's actually attacking me? A, a vine? This... It's like a slam. This thing looks like a plant, but it also kind of looks like a bug. Okay. And I don't think a... Um, 19 will hit you. That is correct, and 19 does not. So, you can continue your movement. Okay. Okay, so you've moved once. What else do you want to do? Um, well, with Lyra's swim speed, would she be able to be dragged out in any way? Or, like, can we at least move, like, five feet closer to the to the door in some sort of fashion, or do I need extra help for just you dragging through that? You can attempt a reposition combat maneuver. You won't incur any attacks of opportunity, but, and Lyra is right now under the effects of a hallucinogen, so it's going to be against her CMD. Okay. 23. That succeeds. By how much? By five. Okay. You can go ahead and move her where you want around you. Okay. I will move her, uh, well, five feet back from her, which puts her at a diagonal from my position. Okay. Toward Sounds the door. good. It is this creature in the corner's turn. It's going to move five feet towards Lyra and Matumbe. Again, this is not a five-foot step. It's just moving. And it's going to attack at Lyra. Does a 21 hit? 
Yes. Okay. That's 14 points of damage, and I need you to roll me a fortitude save. 12. As it hits you, these spores shake off its, its, like, vine and embed themselves in your flesh, and as they kind of burst and become airborne, you breathe this in, and it takes root in your lungs. Oh, no. You take two points of constitution damage. This is a poison. I'll tick down your rounds. You get a save every round. Matumbe, you're up. Okay, you know what Matumbe does that he does best. It is going to be time for some knowledge checks. I'm assuming different checks for the thing that's attacking Lyra and then our purple viney things. Yep. Okay. Both would be knowledge nature, though. Sweet. Um, purple will be my purple dice. Wow. Not great. So... With a natural nine, I'm sorry, with a natural one off the purple dice, I don't think that's going to get me anything at a 12. Nope. Um, but the other thing comes out to a dirty 20. A dirty 20 on the taller creatures? Is that. That was the. Not the purple thing. Oh, so that should be the thing, so thing that's attacking thing Lyra. Corner, you get two questions. Alrighty. Uh, okay, special defenses. Special defenses. It is. Immune to mind affecting, paralysis, poison, polymorph, sleep, and stunning. This is from its plant traits. Okay. It is also immune to cold. Okay. I see. I see. Um, honestly, I think we've kind of seen its special attacks already, so let's just throw one out there for weaknesses, if there are any. I'll give you this. Although it is immune to cold... It being attacked by a cold spell or a weapon that has, like, a frost weapon Mm -hmm. gives it cold lethargy, makes it slowed for the next round. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Matumbe will shout to the rest of the rest of his, uh, his allies. It's this, this one over here seems to be some sort of general plant creature. It does have uh, cold immunity, but it will slow it down if you have cold. Um, but in the meantime, this thing is five feet uh, away from a tomb, i.e. right in front of him. He's just going to take a swing with the book, power attack on. Okay. Unfortunately, that's cocked, but that would be going to a 19. Off the die, but it was cocked. Much better with that natural, too. Uh, <laughs> so a 10. <laughs> that's a no. I hate myself. <laughs> Gotta... Gotta keep it off the edge, buddy. Yep, I know. All right, Lyra, your turn is wasted cowering from the hallucination. Let's figure out what your new hallucination effect is. Lovely. Roll me a d6. A one. (laughs) You feel that you're sinking in quicksand. Fall prone and spend one round flailing your arms and legs as if trying to swim. That's not good. That is not good. The other thing that's not good is I need you to make me another fortitude save. I have an antitoxin on me, but I can't use it. (laughs) A five. Ooh. (laughs) You take one more point of con damage. Hmm. All right, let's see. It is the violet fungi's turn. Both of them are going to move up to Ikmer. And they're each going to attack at him. More like violence, fun guy. Got him. Okay, neither hit. Awesome. Uh, one of them misses by more than five. Ah, awesome. It's the one towards you. Okay. So the one to the east. Next is Eclipse. I would want to go forward and then attack. Okay, make a swim check. Uh, 19 on the die. Yep, so you're fine. I'm good. Um, and then I will swing to attack. Okay. Uh, 23. 23 will hit the creature. And as Eclipse swings, she will say, Matumbe, it's a plant. Aren't you from a jungle? Slash it. (laughs) Um, and 21 damage. As a free action, Matumbe replies, I I already thought about this a lot. It does not have weakness to slashing. (laughs) 
I'm aware. <laughs> but <laughs> Okay. Ikmer. All right. Well, I really can't move uh, without doing an actual movement. And with the the smaller plant, the non-violet fungi right behind me, or almost right behind me, I'd be taking three attacks of opportunity just to move there. Well, if you move towards it, you'd only be taking... Can you not just attack the stuff in front of you? Well, I could. Yeah, keep that yeah. stuff busy so it doesn't get the, like, five feet closer to Lyra and start attacking her as well. <laughs> I'm taking con damage, yep. and I don't have, like, if I keep getting hit, it's just gonna, my hit die pool are getting a lot lower. From somebody that, whose character didn't want to go into this room in the first place, I think you should be thanking me, thanking Ikma for just getting in there. As if he wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, but still. If Lyra could put together a cohesive sentence right now, she would. Well, she can't, can he? Can't she? Alright, uh, then I am attacking the one that missed by more than five, the one closer to me, twice. Okay. Alright, alright. So the first one is going to be uh, 30 to hit. That- uh, 31 to hit. Uh, yeah, it's not a crit? No. Nope. Uh, the next one is going to be a 15 to hit. Nope. All right. Then I do 10 damage. Don't worry, guys. That means their AC is somewhere between 15 and 31. <laughs> We're dialing it in. We are dialing it in. All right. Everybody make a fortitude save. No. Do you ever, like, jinx yourself? Because I just thought to myself, I'm rolling at a plus nine. How bad could it be? And then I rolled a natural one. So pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, it probably will be pretty bad for me, too. Yeah? Yeah, I'm also at plus nine. Numbers? uh, Yeah, 13. 13? I should auto-fail it at the one. Yep. Haley? Eclipse? Uh, 31. Okay. 22 this time. Well, you would have passed, but you're already under the effect of it. Uh, uh, this is a cloud. There's still spores in the air. So, how about the boys each roll me a d6? Be a five. Me too. Sweet. Oh, you both feel like you're shrunk to one-tenth of your original size. <laughs> do nothing next round. Awesome. Speaking of, it's the Bazadron's turn. Oh, wait. I didn't give you that. It's going to attack... Uh... Lyra, who's on the ground. Easy target. Actually, no, it's going to attack um, the Tomb Bay, who swiped at it. And, and and did no damage, as opposed to the Wyang that did 21. Oh, yeah, the <laughs> Wyang did that's do damage. That's cool, too. That's fine. <laughs> and, you know, she's also the only one that's not affected by anything. That seems fair. Okay, Clips, coming at you. That's a 27 to hit. Yeah, that hits. That is 15 points of damage. Go ahead and roll me a fortitude save. 30. You're good. Nice. What's your bonus? Plus 12. Before any other, like, thing. Wow. Alright. That's phenomenal. I know, right? My fortitude's through the goddamn roof. Matumbe... You do nothing this round. Go ahead and... If I don't move, they can't see me. Go ahead and roll me another d6. Sure. Five. Same thing. Keeps I'm going. pretty convinced they can't see me. Yep. <laughs> Lyra, roll me a... What I'm doing's working. D6. Six. <laughs> You're melting! Grasp hold of yourself in an attempt to hold yourself together and take no actions for one round. Nice. So, is Lyra still prone? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Lovely. That's not... You're melting. Stand up. <sighs> Let's see. It's the Violet Fungi's turn. They're going to start moving into the room. Or moving 
I guess, out of the room. So, oh no, no they're not. What am I kidding? They have four natural attacks each. <laughs> no! <laughs> Let's just do that. Ick, you're flat-footed. Because of the hallucination. Okay. So, the first one is going to attack at you four times. Okay. Uh, bu- bu- Does a 24 hit? Meets beats. Okay. Then only one of its whip-like vines hits you. Cool. You take three points of damage, <laughs> and feels like nothing. I need you to make me a fortitude save. Twenty. Twenty saves. Awesome. The other violet fungus is going to do the same old thing. Okay. Attack four times at Ikmer. All right, I got one more hit coming okay. at you. you got to roll pretty damn high to hit you, even with your flat foot. <laughs> Yeah, you do. Also, the DR helps as, as well, so... Three points of damage. Go ahead and make me another fortitude save. Feels like nothing again. 27. You're good. It's Eclipse's turn. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta retcon something really fast. Lyra, make me a fortitude save. I wish I could roll over that fortitude save I made earlier. Because now I rolled a three, so that's a six. One more point of con damage. All right, now go ahead, Eclipse. All right. So I am going to do something kind of, like, just blasty, which is I'm going to release energy at these plants. Okay. Uh, and it goes in a, it goes in a 20-foot radius, so I'm going to put it as far back as possible, and I should still get both those plants, but not Ikmer. Mm-hmm. And it's casting a spell. It is expending points of mental focus. It does provoke. Okay, so I'm going to take my attack of opportunity on you. 24. That hits. Take 10 points of damage. Make a fortitude save. 30. Okay. All right. You fail. (laughs) Just up to DC. There's no chance for the rest of us. Okay, so I need a reflex save from both of them. The Violet Fungus. The highest is an 11. So they both fail, which means they'll take full damage, okay. and it's 5d6 of damage. Hell yeah! Ooh. What type of damage? Uh, I get to pick, so I will pick... You have no knowledge of these, by the way. Yeah, I don't care. Um, I'll pick Acid. I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared about doing electricity and water. I know that doesn't happen, but, like, it freaks me out. Yeah, that would be bad. 14. They both appear to still be up. Ikmer, roll me a d6. Three. I'm getting real close to let's mount up and get the fuck out of here. Your sword has turned into a viper. (laughs) Drop it and flee from the item at top speed for one round. Oh, boy. I like that sword. So you drop it? Yeah, yeah. Drop it. And flee from Uh, it at top speed. Definitely. So I would uh, crawl over Lyra's body on the ground, Mm -hmm. take my uh, two attacks of opportunity, and... Is your speed 20 or 30? You gotta spend your whole turn doing it, so you're gonna move, you're gonna double move away. So you have 25 feet that you gotta go back. 27 hits you, right? That is correct. Okay. So both of the violet fungi whiff. They miss you. And then this other creature hits you and deals 14 points of damage. Make a fortitude save. Oh, did you guys see that? My sword, the the handle, it it just, the emerald in the bottom, it turned into two eyes, and then it started wiggling around like a snake. (laughs) Everybody else is having their own sort of hallucination fit. Yeah. Yeah, this is what you would call a bad trip. Um, this is a 20. 20 fortitude save? You're yeah. Good. All right. Well, since Eclipse is, the only, Eclipse is the only one not tripping, go ahead and make me a fortitude save. 29. Okay, you're good. It's attacking you. 27. You take... 
13 points of damage. Please make me another fortitude save. Is there anything else this is against? Just as a poison. Poison. Poison exclusively, not disease. Yep. Neat. That would then be a 17. That saves. Oh, good. It's five on the die. I was very worried. Next in the order is Matumbe. Go ahead and roll me that d6. So point of clarity, I think I had rolled a d6 to think that I was shrunken. Then I did that round and you had me roll again at the end and I thought I was shrunken. So I think for this round, I think I'm shrunken. Yeah. And then Um, this roll will determine what you think going forward. Perfect. So uh, just for flavor's sake, um, let's, I'm standing in front of an open uh, 10 foot wide door. Let's just go ahead and pretend does not have to have any mechanical reason to be there, but there's like a divider between what would be two five foot wide swing doors and uh, Matumbe is standing behind the divider kind of like if you're playing hide to, hide and go seek with someone who doesn't realize they're too wide to not stand behind a tree <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's kind of wait I don't have to roll anything except a d6 yes. okay here we go wow that was so far oh, out you of had my box. one roll this turn and you blew and it I just fucked it up it's, it's going last in the drink thing in the beginning that's what this is uh, six a six. You're melting. Grasp hold of yourself in an attempt to hold yourself together. Take no actions for one round. Ugh. All right. Lyra, roll me a fortitude save. Yes. 21. Okay, the poison is no longer affecting you. Fuck yeah. Finally. Roll me another d6. Oh, no. Four. Four. We're going to get through all of these today. You're suffocating. Stand in place, hold your breath, and clutch at your throat for one round. Stand in place? Does that mean I get to stand up? (laughs) Nope. God damn it. (laughs) All right. It's the Violet Fungi's turn. They're both going to move up and attack Lyra. This isn't going to be good. You are prone. I will take that bonus to my attack roll. Uh, That's a... Or wait. Do you have prone on your sheet? I do. If you but do, then I'll just I'll just do my regular attack. So uh, twenty-two. That succeeds. Yeah. Yeah, and then eleven. I'm guessing fails. That does fail. Okay. So you take five points of damage, and I need you to roll me a fortitude save. I'm getting worse and worse at these fortitude saves. Yes. Nineteen. You're okay. Oh, thank goodness. Next. Maybe because she's suffocating. She's not breathing any of the spores in. <laughs> she's not breathing. <laughs> yep. Uh, Cliffs. I'm really stuck in a hard place here. Yeah, Lyra's just getting swarmed by plants. And Matumbe thinks he can hide behind the divider. I, I get so much enjoyment of picturing Shaquille O'Neal in every situation that Matumbe's in. <laughs> 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 Namely, this episode, that one. Oh yeah, no, that's hilarious. Um... I I feel as though I'm very stuck here. So uh, there's like the flee option, but that's not great for anyone else. I think I can still take a couple more attacks. So I'm going to try and attack this thing and hopefully uh, do some damage. Um, but if that doesn't work, next round, like, it's run time. I miss. Do you? 15. Yeah, you miss. Okay, Ikmer, you've just run out of the room. Unfortunately, you haven't run out of the poison cloud. So go ahead and make me... Roll me a d6. Another three. Is that the same thing? I think so. If it's the sword one, I don't have another sword. Well, you drop your shield, and you continue to run. (laughs) Your shield... Is a snapping turtle. <laughs> ah! That's clever flavor. I'll give that one to you. That's pretty good. Guys, my shield is trying to bite me. You are no longer in the fungal field. After this round, you're not affected by an hallucinogen. But when you get back into the radius, I just have to make it to save time. This creature is going to clap back at, mid, or at uh, Eclipse. 
since she appears to be the only one unaffected, first I need her to make a fortitude save. 21. You're good. It attacks at you. I don't think an 18 hits. It does not. Okay. Next in the order is Matumbe. Go ahead and roll me a d6. So he's clutching to himself, trying to hold him together as he thinks he's melting. And rolls a six. You're melting still. Or again. Cool. I think you were melting at some point. It's getting worse. <laughs> Much like we are melting in this recording studio. <laughs> it's so hot in here. Lyra. D6 time. Six. You're melting. All right. Both of these creatures, the violet fungi, are going to full attack at Lyra. Game over. Lyra, you're prone. Make sure you keep that in mind. Yep. Mm, you're probably okay. Um, 16. No, that hits because she's prone. What about... I think we already said 11 doesn't hit. That's correct. Okay, so only one of these hits. Thank goodness. That was really not looking good. Only one of them attacking. Ah. Okay, that's five points of damage. Roll a fortitude save. This die's rolling well for me. I hope it continues. Uh. Uh. Ten. Okay. If you guys remember, you found some violet fungus poison. Well, now we know what it does. And this does... Now we're going to say... Dark is strength, and silvery or uh, coppery is uh, constitution. You take three points of constitution damage and one point of strength damage. Oh, no. The other one attacks at you four times. Okay, does a 15 hit? Meets beats. Okay, two of these hit. You're going to take four points of damage. And I need two more fortitude saves. Does it matter the order? They're the same. Oh, okay. They're the same thing. Um, so, yeah. I got a 12 and a 3. Okay. Oh, boy. This is a lot of guns. This is lights out. This is it. Not Maybe not this round, but one writing's con, on three the wall, strength. guys. That was only from one? Yep. One con, three strength. Oh, boy. So, what's that? Seven points of strength damage and... How much con? Eleven. Yikes. Three more points of con damage, and Lyra will go to zero, and she will be permadead. Let's make it happen. Oh, wait, sorry, I got those flipped. Sorry, only nine. Eclipse. Okay, uh, this is an idea that I want to voice out loud to sound to see if it sounds crazy. So, I can immediately, right now, summon an octopus, and then I want the octopus to pull Lyra out. Is that- is that not so? I mean, it'll take attacks of opportunity the whole way out, which deal con damage. I can't fathom that that would be worse than her just sucking up four attacks per creature per round. Yeah, I have nine hit points left. If you could do that bursting again. I- I, uh... I don't think I can. No, I can't, because I put three points in conjuration. So. All right. So, I I mean, at this point, I think that's what I'll do, is I'm going to expend a point of mental focus, summon octopus. Does that provoke? It doesn't say, like all the other ones. It just says as a standard action. Like all the other ones say when it does. This does not. I mean, I'm going to guess it would every other thing does. No, like, they say when they do. Not everything evokes or provokes an attack of opportunity. Like, uh, let me double check. Yeah, my standard, my, like, mind steed also doesn't say, like, provokes. Only certain things say it. Okay, so then, um, I'll summon an octopus right, uh, in front of Matumbe, between Matumbe and Lyra. Okay. Does that appear this round? Yeah, Yeah, because she has it as a standard. That's awesome. It's a... Oh, yeah, it's not the full round or whatever. Okay, and so then, um... 
I'm pulling up the stat block, uh, so then it can start pulling Lyra out. Lyra's not unconscious, and she's still hallucinating. Make a reposition Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What if... What if I emit an ink cloud, which is a free action? The water doesn't cover any of these things' eyes. Okay. I'm not more meant Lyra. Oh, well... So that Lyra... I'll give, it, I mean, I'll give you a 20% miss chance if you do that. Oh, I don't want to miss chance. I just didn't want to No, I mean, I'll give, I'll give, like, them a, that against Lyra. Because she's, like, laying down in the water. I, I thought you were going to tell me that Lyra is, like, in a fight against it. She's hallucinating, so right. you need to make a grapple check to do anything to her. That's fine. Which is going to be very easy. Yeah, so I'll do that. Um, okay. Of all the times to roll a three... Octopus should have decent grapple. Nine total. Oh, no. That doesn't <laughs> oh, no. Does do it. All right. Guys, it's getting a little late. It's already hams o'clock. Uh, it's hams. Ikmer, you're no longer hallucinating. I'm still going to emit a 10-foot radius of ink. Okay. Can you do that? Free action. Free action. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have this. Cool. We'll see if it helps. <laughs> okay. It, so, Ikmer, outside of the uh, spore cloud. Ikmer, get Majumbe out! I, I'm, I'll i try. Yeah, definitely, because it it's a lot clearer out here. But, yeah, so I'm going to double move, and I will get to my shield that is ten feet behind Majumbe. All right. Can't pick it up yet, though. It's a creature's turn, and all hallucination effects end. It's out. <laughs> Whoa! Thank goodness. Outlast. We are back in business. It attacks Eclipse. Sort of. Yeah, sort of. Ooh, yeah, that'll hit. 28. Yeah. All right. That is 11 points of damage. Please make me a fortitude save. 19? Yep, you're good. Matumbe's up. And I'm able to act now, correct? Yes, you can act. Wonderful. Okay. I almost lost my skin there. Um, and he's going to go ahead and there's a... Oh, jeez. Okay. He can't really see Lyra. Like, I, I don't know what to do in this case, because I want to help Lyra. Um, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck it, let's get to work. All right, I'm back in. So Matumbe is still right next to this original creature, um, and he's going to go ahead and start swinging. Start swinging that book. That's a 10 off the die going up to an 18. Hits. I said that very confidently. I was not sure. If that <laughs> oh, sweet. Max damage off that. 17 points, bludgeoning damage. Cold iron, if it matters, I know it doesn't. I feel like you were going for a fake it till I make it. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. It worked. Okay. Is Matumbe moving or doing anything else? Uh, if he does not move, would this impede... Well, the octopus isn't even grappling Lyra yet. Right. Nah, he's going to stay. Okay. Lyra, you're no longer under the effects of the hallucination. You're feeling very weak, very sickly. This whole experience for Lyra was super disoriented. She was switching back and forth between being small and melting and choking and drowning, which is not a normal fear that she has. Okay. And so this is this is a very interesting spot you're in. You have a swim speed. Yes. You can full retreat or full retreat. Can I full retreat? out the door, or will that provoke an attack of opportunity from that? A full withdrawal will ignore the first square of AOL, so it will ignore the two violet fungi attacks, but it will not ignore this creature in the corner's attack. Listen, you got five con. You got con to spare. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Con to spare. But I do really... But I think that creature can... Do enough damage if it hits Lyra, it could knock her unconscious. Yeah, and the other ones are con. just doing a lot more con damage. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a. I say try to get out, but it's your character. 
Yeah, I don't, you don't know. You don't Do you have, have anything else? Place you, could, uh, no, you could go back in and try to go for that uh, wand oh, that you really wanted. Yeah. yeah. You could, I mean, you can diagonally move. Or no, that one's diagonally at you. So you can make it so you only take one attack of opportunity, whichever direction. Or if you go up or if you go, so if you go to the, if you go to the east or you go to the south, you can make it so you only take one AOO. Otherwise, you're going to get full attack. Twice. Yeah, I, I need to get out of this room. So Lyra is going to full withdraw, swim out through the door. And I believe the prone condition then comes off. Because she's like in the water, but swimming. I don't know how that... Yeah, I'll okay. say it does. I don't think mechanically it does. You probably have to take an action to stand, but you're fucking swimming and have been swimming this whole time. I don't know anything that swims horizontally, or vertically rather than horizontally, so. Deep water. A great white shark. All right, so this below. one, the creature in the corner is going to AOO you then. Does she get any of the concealment? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. That's really nice. Okay, so I need to roll higher than a 20. 68. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud. <laughs> 16 on the die will hit you. Oh, yeah. That is 11 points of damage. Clear as unconscious. Ooh. Make a fortitude save. All right, I have a good card. I need to use it now because I can't take any more. I think damage. realistically it doesn't matter because you're underwater. Oh yeah, but don't you get a couple rounds? Are you like instantly? Next round, you are permanently dead. You're underwater. You are unconscious underwater. Well, maybe someone could. Pick next me round, up? but three of the party has cure light wounds. Wands, yes. So, yeah. You know, maybe somebody other than Lyra can cast a healing spell for once in this campaign. I I am gonna use my. Good card, so I just roll twice. Yep. And my fortitude is at a plus zero. Ooh. A 15? Nope. Oh. oh. Okay. Hang on. It does say that unconscious characters must begin making constitution text checks immediately upon becoming submerged. Once they're unconscious. And if you fail, then you drop another hit point. On the following round, you drowned. That's how it goes. Gotcha. So you have to make a con check. I'm at a negative two, so ten. It's ten plus one per round, so it's an eleven. Right? Or is it a ten? Because it's the beginning. It hasn't even been around. I'll okay. say it's ten, even if it's eleven. I'll let you have that. Okay, so then she is successful. Okay. Which means, technically, I don't think that she dies next round. She no. then has to do the she dies when she check. Okay. starts bleeding out. All right. So just like just like when you're bleeding out on the ground, if you start bleeding out underwater, you then drown. Like you you have that and then a turn and you drown. Yeah. So like next round, she'll have to make a DC eleven con check, and if she fails that, then she would drown the round after that. Have we made your check to stabilize? No, but I was going to see what the con damage is, because it... It will affect that? Yeah. Okay. That is two points of con damage. Ooh. Hey, anybody have a uh, thing they want to spend on this? Is this your last hit point? Um, oh, wait a minute. When I took that con damage, I took more... Like, I went even more negative, because mm -hmm. I'm at negative eight right now. And I only have. You died, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, because I have a, f I have eleven con damage, so I'm at a three, and I'm at a minus eight. You're dead. So I'm dead, dead. Oh, at least she died in the water. Oh. We need to stop and play a song of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> well. Anyways. Did someone Oof. grab my sword from out of there? Salir drowns. Or rather, dies underwater. Yep. Cheers to that. Sorry, I finished my drink. Here, you need a drink. <laughs> Just take one. You need one. Oof. All right. But, guys, I'm 
Kind of serious. I do need my sword from out of there. Okay, we're still in combat. It's a violet fungi's turn. They both move into the room. Or move towards you guys. Um, move them each five feet. They're both going to attack the octopus. Does a 19 hit? The octopus? Oh, the octopus. My bad. I was still busy looking up drowning rules and forgot to change. Turns out we didn't need them. Too much con damage. Yeah, that hits. Okay, it takes five points of damage. Make a... Wait, am I in the ink cloud? Sure. I was only humoring that to potentially save Lyra's life. It was a good chance. 61. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead yeah, and make... Concealment's not a joke. I mean, I'm, I've been fucked by concealment so many times. Yeah. Fortitude? Yep. Yeah. 23. Yeah, it's good. It is... Eclipse's turn. You just saw Lyra go under. This creature in front of you, it slammed down with its vine, and you saw, like, these purple veins come off of it, and these spores pop up all over Lyra, almost covering her like a fungus taking over. And then she bobbed under the water. Okay, so the octopus is going to attack the fungus in front of it. Twice. 22. Hits. Nice. Okay, I need a fortitude save. How the tables have turned. <laughs> Nine. Fail. Okay, is it poison? E yes, I Yep, think? they're immune. Oh, damn it. Well, it still takes three damage. And then it's going to do slam with its tentacle and then try and grab it. Okay. 13. Nope. All right, so then Eclipse can go now. Yep. Uh, and Eclipse is just going to... I, th I think at this point, I don't... I, I mean, we could just start retreating, right? You leave the sword and Lyra probably and the item. Okay. So then I will attack the thing in front of me. And you basically made Emily's sacrifice worth nothing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 15, so it doesn't hit. Which are you attacking? The thing that I'm attacking. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and put a barrier up. All right. Ikmer. All right. He is going to pick up his shield and uh, then... Well, there's no space for him to move up anywhere to actually attack, so he's going to yeah, move five feet forward after picking up his shield, and that will be the entirety of the turn. Okay. But now he can bodyguard. It's a creature's turn. Bodyguard. Okay. Unless it's against the octopus. No, it's not. It attacks Eclipse. Okay, 25. You are bodyguarded. Yes. So what's that go to? Is that hit? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. You take 10 points of damage, and I need you to make me a fortitude save. Cool. Not you, Brooks. Or were you doing in harm's way? You said bodyguard. Yeah, you said bodyguard. Ah, oh, you're right. I said the... But that's okay. I said the wrong thing, but I meant the other thing, and that's my fault. Uh, 22. 22 is fine. Yeah. I'm probably the better one to... Like, if, if anyone's going to miss the in harm's way, I might be the better one right now. Matumbe, you're up. All right, so I won't replicate it here, but Matumbe roars. And I don't know... I think Bane Plant is a thing. Yep. <laughs> he can certainly Bane Plant. He Banes Plant on the book and swipes at the one that's directly in front of him, the one he's been trying to hit this whole time. Remember to add your plus two to hit as of well from yep. the Bane. 16 off the die, that's doing yeah, it. that hits. And basically, as he swings, the, you, there's a, a purple energy coming off the book as Phrasma pushes this thing onto the creature, dealing 15 plus 9, 24 points of damage. Dead. Boom. Nice. Woo. All right. Lyra's dead, so it's a Violet Fungi's turn. They're both going to full attack the octopus. Or, one's going to full attack the octopus, 
if it kills the octopus, the other one's going to move up. Okay. I have a 29, a... Or, sorry, no, not a 29. A 19, a 21, a 13. Anything above 15 hits. Six points of damage. Then it'd be dead. Okay. Okay, so it kills the octopus. Oh, man, I was going to have you make two uh, fortitude saves. Dang it. The next one moves <laughs> up and attacks Eclipse. I'll give you a second. Would you like to bodyguard? Yeah, I want to in harm's way. Okay. 15 doesn't hit Ikmer. Nice. Eclipse, you're up. I shall attack the violet fungus in front of me. Okay. 15. That hits. Yay! That die is still going away, but Or no, yeah. sorry, that does not hit. I'm thinking of the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking of the saves a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, hon. No, you're not. It's close. <laughs> you're not sorry at all. It's really close. Ikmer. All right. Uh, now that there is a uh, space in between, he is going to move in front of Mutumbe. Okay. And then I'm going to shield bash. I think that one gets an AOO, the one in the corner. True. It is a 21, which won't hit you. Correct. Does a 20 hit? Yes. Awesome. S- seven points. Okay. It's still there. Matumbe. All right. Uh, fun fact, I have not moved yet. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, he's going to continue. I mean, he's just like in a full battle fury. He sees um, just no bubbles coming up from where Lyra went under. He he can read the writing on the walls. He knows what happened. Uh, Bane plant on this other thing. Kind of forgot. Ikmer really didn't see that very 13 well. 13 on the die. Should do. Yep. Does plant still apply? It's a fungus. Yep. Okay, cool. Plant still just just want to make sure before I rolled extra damage. Again, really good damage. Uh, 17 off the dice plus an, an additional 9 is going to bring that up to... I'm sorry, it's a plus. It, it adds like a plus 2 enhancement, so that should be a plus 11, right? Yeah. I think it adds 2 to the damage. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so 28 points of damage. Dead. Neat. Damn, where was this all day? Um, I, was, I was powering <laughs> and melting, melting. And I haven't moved yet. Yeah. Um... It's a violet fungi's turn. It's going to quadruple attack Ikmer because it's not intelligent, and it does not understand that it's not going to get through this armor. <laughs> Natty 20, baby. Oh, I got so fucking close. I got an 18 and a 19. Then neither of those will hit you. Nice. What's your EC? 26. Yeah. I can't hit you unless you're flat. Or unless I get a 20. Cool. That was its turn, Eclipse. Eclipse will swim up. Okay, make a swim check. 20. You're good. And she will hit. Yeah, she will hit. Okay. Finally, I haven't rolled a six. I definitely hit, because it's a 17 on the die. Okay. It's dead. Excuse me. I have the right to give okay, you my yeah, damage. Yeah. More than open to hearing it. It's 21 damage. Okay, how do you kill it? Um, I would like to slash all of its vines off the side and just have a stalk. Okay, it's just a stalk. Yes. That makes me more and, satisfied. I don't know why. And as you make the stalk, you see Lyra bob to the surface, face down. And I need you to pour one out for the homies, because we'll see you next week. Oof. Oh. 